Let's start our introduction to Solaris and Karma by taking a look at the UI, as well as some very basics to USD. So as we go through this series, the project files will be available on Patreon. They're not necessary to follow along with this series because we're going to build everything in the series in these videos, but the project files will have some notes in the network view that just allow you to reference those instead of having to reference back to the videos, as well as some little tidbits uh, extra here and there as I think of them after the videos or something. So may have a little bit of that here and there, but we're gonna cover mostly everything in these videos. So if you wanna grab those on Patreon, you can do so on there. I'm also gonna be using a custom desktop for Houdini, and that's also available on Patreon if you would like that. But again, that's not necessary to follow along with this series. It's just going to allow you to speed up your workflow just a little bit, but we'll cover that here in just a moment. So by default, Houdini, you're gonna load up into this view. So we're gonna be in the build context here. I'd recommend jumping over to Solaris. This is gonna be the Solaris desktop, and this is gonna allow us to work inside of, inside of Karma and USD. So everything is the same with our UI. We have our scene view here, we have the parameters here, and then we have our network view here, and it's just set to the stage context by default. The only thing that has changed is this little section right here is a geometry spreadsheet now. And all this is is a scene graph for Solaris. So this is basically just a scene graph that you'd find in, you know, car or inside of Maya or Cinema 4D. This is just gonna allow us to work with USD inside of Houdini. It's just Houdini's little version of the scene graph. So let's go ahead and jump over to the custom desktop that I have created and everything's gonna be the same except for this one panel right here. I have just a few buttons set up that allow me to quickly switch the network view over to a different network view, whether it be the object context or stage context, whatever it may be. And then I have a button that just toggles Karma XPU to be on or off. Just something to speed up your workflow just a little bit. But again, this is not necessary to work with with this series, just a little quality of life thing. So if we hover over our viewport here and press D, we have some different settings for our viewport. So by default, it's gonna load up this render tab is new for Karma and, and Solaris. So this is gonna pop up and you have some different settings that you can change if you select Karma CPU or XPU. I'm gonna select XPU and you're gonna see that we have some render settings that are available to us in here. So these are gonna be the default render settings that Houdini is gonna use for the viewport if we don't have anything set up in the network view. Now we can override the viewport to use a specific set of render settings, which we'll go over later on in the series when we get to the rendering section. So let's take a look at the one thing that I wanna cover as far as USD goes. I wanna make it very clear that you don't need to know really anything about USD to work effectively inside Solaris. You need to understand one thing, and that's basically what we're gonna cover in this video. That's really all you need to know to work as a solo artist inside of Solaris, so don't be scared of USD. But if you are working in a studio, you're gonna to wanna to know more about USD, and you're gonna to need to know more about USD. So take a look elsewhere, I guess, if that's what you're looking for. But if you just wanna get started with Solaris and Karma, this is gonna be all you need to know. So in order to show you what we need to know, which is basically just attributes, I need to show you how we can bring geometry into the stage context here. So typically people are gonna work in two ways when they're working inside of the Solaris or inside of the stage context. They're either going to build everything inside of the OBJ context, and then they're gonna come into the stage context and use a SOP import, and they're gonna import everything in that way. I recommend not doing that and I'll tell you why. We have a node called the SOP create inside of the stage context. And once we dive inside this, we have access to everything in SOPs. So this is basically like working inside of the geometry context, but we're just building directly inside of this stage context. So everything's gonna be automatically imported and it's gonna just save us a little bit of time, keeps us the flexibility that we have with Houdini, just the kind of procedural nature of it, and just brings it all to our fingertips here. 
So as I said, we have like our sphere or our grid. I'm gonna drop that down because we're gonna use that here in a moment. And then again, we have like attribute wrangles, things like that. So every, every SOP is available to us inside of this node. So if I go ahead and jump back up to the stage context here, so you'll see, you're gonna see me click this button a lot. This is gonna be the, just jumping back up to the stage view. So all you have to do is click there, but I'm gonna use this button quite a bit. That's all it's doing. So if we look over to our scene graph here, we have a different X form here, as well as a mesh that's available to us. So this is just our node that's over here. So our SOP creates. So if I go ahead and rename this to something like geometry, you can see that it's going to change the name there. And then we have our mesh, which is everything that's inside of this SOP create. Currently, we only have one mesh that's being brought in or it's bring, everything is being brought in as one mesh. We can change that later. I'll cover that here in another video. But for now, let's just take a look at this one mesh. So we have this mesh and we select it. We have some things available to us in this panel, which brings me to the things that we need to cover as far as attributes go. So if you take a look at the documentation here, if we're looking at the Solaris SOP import specifically, part of the documentation, I'm not sure why this is in the SOP import. I think that this should be its own page because this is kind of important. Probably one of the most important things as far as USD goes. Um, especially for Houdini users. So this is how attributes are converted to USD or converted to like USD speak, I should say. So we have a certain set of attributes that are gonna be changed to different names and they're all listed here. So we have P becomes points, N becomes normals, V becomes velocities, W angular velocities, Excel accelerations, ID becomes IDs. And then we have UV, CD, and alpha, which all become premvars with that prefix there. So all the premvars prefix is, is basically, it's just USD speak for attributes. So it stands for primitive variables. And if we jump over to the USD basics section of the documentation, you can scroll down to this part where it says attributes and primvars. You can see that USD also recognizes a specific type of attribute called a primvar. So as I, as I said, a primvar is basically just an attribute. It's just the USD name for it. The name primvar comes from RenderMan, which is from Pixar. Pixar created USD, and it stands for primitive variable. At the basic tree level, primvars are just attributes, as I said, with the primvars schema namespace prefix. What makes them special is how Hydra delegates treat them, and they can use, be, their main purpose is to override material parameters. So the, the way that different Hydra delegates treat them, we're gonna need to go over that uh, a little bit here. So with UV, CD, and alpha, UV becomes primvars ST, CD becomes primvars display color, alpha, primvars display opacity, and then another big one here is width, widths, and p scale all become the widths attribute. So if we jump back over into Houdini here, we can jump into our geometry node and drop down a UV flatten. And let's jump over to the stage back to the top level, make sure we have this mesh selected. And then we can scroll down here and you see that we have a few different things that we just talked about. So we have the display color, display opacity, and then Premvars ST, which is our UVs that just got added on there. So it's important to know which attributes are getting converted to different names, because for example, display color, we might use that at render time in our shaders. And if we try to access the color attribute by using CD, like we would normally do inside Houdini, we're not gonna have access to that. It's going to need to be display color so that we can read in those colors so that USD, uh, or Material X in this case, knows what it's looking for in the USD kind of naming conventions. So definitely understand which attributes are getting converted and what they're getting converted to. And then the last thing that I wanna cover here with USD is if we drop down a line, and this is kind of a Solaris specific thing. If we take down a line here, it's not showing up here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But if we jump back up to the stage context, you're gonna see that we have this 
kind of a ribbon that's being displayed. So I'm just gonna lock my viewport since it's not showing inside of the, the SOP create. A lot of times it will. So you'll have this type of a view inside of the SOP create, which can be really annoying when you're going to model certain things. And you'll get this with, with lines and, and with uh, points and stuff, they'll be displayed differently. So if we go ahead and drop down an attribute create, all we have to do is set the width attribute to make this go away. So if we set this to width, you can see by default, we have it set to a value of zero. And that's just gonna make that go away. So if this was showing up in the SOP create, like I said, little buggy, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'd say more often than not, it does show up in the SOP create and it's really annoying to work with. So I use this as kind of a, a you know, attribute, to get rid of that. So I'll drop down a line or whatever, and then I'll immediately drop down this attribute create with a width set to zero so that I get rid of that ribbon that's showing up. And that's just how USD sees the, the default value if it doesn't have anything set. And if we want to have that display for whatever reason, you know, you can change this around and have that display. But more often than not, you're just gonna have that be in the way and it's gonna be really annoying. So just drop down an attribute create with a width attribute set to zero, and then that will get rid of that. And it's just like working inside of the geometry context. And then at the end, or if you ever need to change this again, you can, you can change that. Uh, but just by, by default, I would just drop down a, uh, a width attribute when you're working with specific things. So that's gonna wrap up the introduction to the UI and the little basics of USD. We're gonna continue the series by going over how to create geometry. We kind of covered a little bit of it there, but we're gonna go over kind of organizing this and how this all works in the scene graph, as well as creating groups and stuff and importing those into the, the scene graph and in, importing those into the top level of our USD, because that's gonna be important as well when we go to assign things like shaders, we may need to access groups, and we're gonna to need to know how to, you know, keep everything all organized inside of our scene. So that will be the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments and ask those, but we will continue to build upon this series as we go. And as I said, the project files will be available on Patreon. If you would like to grab them on there, you can do so, but they are not necessary to follow along with this series. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. That's an introduction to the UI of Solaris and have a good day.